Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan. Hi, I'm Olha. Hi, my name is Nico. We are interactive engineers on the Lens Studio team here at Snapchat. Our team works as interim between Lens Studio engineers and Lens Studio users, trying to make AR easily accessible and understandable for everyone. And what's really cool about what we do is it allows others to experience and build with us. And one of the coolest new features that we came out with recently is SnapML. I would love to hear more about how we're innovating with SnapML and what you would like to see. So actually talking about SnapML is a great way to start conversation about innovation in AR. Basically, it allows you to plug in your custom neural networks and uh, run them in Lens Studio and make them available at the cross-platform environment and share with million users worldwide. And we have connected with various talented people during working on this SnapML project. A lot of people from our community, the ML residency partners, and they all created immersive and experiences that we never would think about, such as adding features that does not exist in Lens Studio yet, for example, learning new language by just tapping at the objects around you or classifying your doodles, your paintings, or even getting the nutritional value of the food you're eating that all can be now available within a lens. Another type of experiences are digital trayons that are using body tracking or shoe tracking or, for example, nail segmentation or even some more specific and niche-specific projects like, for example, scanning your surfboard or analyzing cracks on the wall of how dangerous they are. I love that idea. Um, it's this fact that because we're no longer requiring Snapchat or Lens Studio to come up with a feature, we can come up with any feature. So SnapML is really any feature because anyone can do the thing that they want and make it hyper-specific to the experience that they're trying to build. What are some of the features and templates and, or guides that helps creator do this? So we provided a couple of templates that cover basic use cases of machine learning and uh, provided examples of the training notebooks of like lightweight models that are really easy and fast to run on mobile devices that can be taken as are used or taken as a start point to your own uh, models development. And what is great about the community that they started creating their own templates and that's really amazing. It has a lot of flexibility. You can process either data or you can process images and you can have the outputs in various different ways. But uh, because of this, the community, they started like sharing what was hard for them to understand. They just like explained that in the, the best possible ways that Basically, they're doing the part of, of our job and we're really, really, really grateful for that. That's really awesome, especially your point about how it's any feature. So like all these different creators can do all these different things with SnapML. What are some of the ways that people can learn how to use SnapML or get started with SnapML? So to get started with SnapML, you can just pick one of the available templates built into Lens Studio that covers some of the most common use cases and most common tasks of machine learning. And uh, they also have examples of uh, training code of some lightweight and really simple networks that run really well on mobile devices. And I think you can just start exploring from there. So actually, Snap ML is also how I got started with ML. My favorite part was to check out just the notebooks and like just run through the notebooks and like read the comments and just learn how each notebook is made. The classification notebook, for example, is a great way to uh, get started with training notebooks because it already comes with a lot of attribute presets, and such as detecting if someone is bald, detecting if someone has bangs, and detecting someone ha is wearing earrings. And the default model that we use is used to detect if someone is wearing glasses or not. So when I was going through the notebook, all I did was just to change the attribute part into like another different attribute. Let's say like having bangs or not. And then we export that and then input that into Lens Studio. And then now we will have a lens that detect if people have bangs or not, which is just great. It's so easy to use. It's so intuitive. And it's also, I feel like I learned a lot while using it. And what is exciting about our community, they already started creating their own templates. So for example, something is like a bit hard to understand, 
for someone and he just like shares his experience, his guides, and this is amazing. And also we have amazing partners that also created like notebooks and tutorials for us. That's really good. Wow, that's really cool. So you mentioned classification, and I think we have a couple other templates. It's object detection, so detecting where an object is in the camera. Um, so classification allows you to know whether an object is in the camera. There's segmentation to get an outline of different things. Um, and there's style transfer that changes the style of the image to one that you prepared. And all of this, there's a template for and a notebook for, um, and that's really cool. But I would love to hear what other ML stuff that is in one studio. I think actually a lot, so many more ML stuff in Lens Studio is just a lot of it that we kind of took it for granted and we don't really think about it as an ML because it's already like a core part of the technology, such as face tracking or uh, gesture tracking or all the segmentation uh, layers that we use. They're all part of a result of machine learning and image recognition. But recently, we also launched a few different, more uh, advanced segmentation templates, such as the ground segmentation template. And we also, on the web, we have a ground, sky, and tree segmentation template, which is one template that segments out both sky and a tree and grass and the ground in separate layers, which is really cool to use if users can like overlay different objects on a different layer and the objects will show up differently in different parts of like the lens whenever you use it to scan. Yeah, I love that point about SnapML. You can get really specific if you just care about the tree and the sky. You can create a SnapML model for that and the lens will be specific to that. What an amazing world because we don't have to wait for a lens studio to come up with more things. Mm -hmm. And uh, as computational possibilities of our devices are growing, I'm really excited to see where it brings SnapML. Like audio processing, uh, there is so much yet to see and better understand the world around us. I love the way that we're talking about AR. We're now breaking out of the, the face and into the world and even to this new spaces that, you know, just a couple of years ago wasn't possible. So I would love to hear about, um, recently we've uh, done a little bit of body tracking and hand stuff. Tell me more about that. So as soon as you move further from the camera, you can scan the whole person. And when you track the person's body joints, you can get a whole another level of input into your lens, uh, which is really amazing and opens like a, a lot of possibilities. Uh, since the camera uh, gets smarter, we get a better understanding of the world around us and we have a way to combine digital and physical worlds in the most natural and organic way, in the, I would say, believable way. And a great example of that is Spectacle Depth Template, where we can make 3D objects collide with real world, which is amazing. Another, we can create advanced shaders using depth textures uh, to create something like fog or water, which is amazing too. We can even use such advanced and new technologies as LiDAR and get the total understanding of the environment around us. Is that a table? Is that a chair? Is that a floor and just like place things organically around you. The LiDAR technology is super cool because it has such a precise knowledge of the environment around you and it really enables new possibilities of creating AR interactions. If all we have is just a, a plane tracking on the world, we can create a lot of interesting interactions, but it's kind of hard to like make users appreciate the AR elements in it. Let's say if you create like a mini game in like the AR world and then you have it like interacting with things around it, but without like a precise knowledge of the environment around you, it's kind of like tricky for users to appreciate the fact that it's an AR experience rather than it's just an experience. But with the depth template and with the uh, LiDAR technology, we can really think about like and having things popping up in the world around you. So an experience would be completely different whether we're enjoying it in our room or like on an open grass. Things will be very different based on the environment that you're in. And I think that's very, very exciting. What well, you're kind of saying there, since I'm in, sitting in a chair, I can have a desert pop up here. But if I move my phone over to the ground, water can pop up in the ground. Um, I love that integration that AR allows. It actually makes me think a little bit about uh, your point body earlier. In some ways, things get more natural, right? Because I'm used to, if something's coming at me, I'm used to ducking my head. And before, I may have to learn on the keyboard, like, what button do I press to, to duck? But it, with the body, um, you can actually duck. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Or like, 
Uh, actually, with body tracking and with understanding of the person's pose, we get a whole another level into, of input to AR experiences. Of course, it's been explored before, but now also it can be a part of a lens. And I was uh, really impressed that a lot of people uh, that took part in our gaming and educational residency, they took body tracking as a control input to their lenses. For example, boxing with the enemy when you can duck or hit uh, using body tracking. I don't know, control the car by tilting of your head or your limbs. Or we used to press buttons, but now you can stay in far from the phone, you can press buttons uh, with your hands. It's amazing because it just, it's more natural. We're not thinking about how we're going to control the thing. We're just controlling it because we do that on our daily basis. And with SnapML, again, like with your example earlier about glasses, um, whether you're wearing glasses or not, or wearing glasses, that's a, just a natural thing that you do every day, but the experience can completely change. Where should I start from if I want to create those? We have several courses on the website that and it explains very extensively how to create a scavenger hunt game from scratch. So we provide templates with a pre-made scavenger hunt game and the template allows you to use different interactions as inputs and create your own outputs with the scripts pre-built with it. For example, an input could be from looking for a dog or a cat around you or looking for any image that you can recognize. So you can really use any image you want. You can, it can be a stop sign, it can be maybe image of a trash can, and then you can create your own storyline within this template and create a unique ex experience that you design yourself and then share it with your families and friends and then see how they enjoy it or see maybe they can learn something from it. That's actually a really good point about learning it. You're not flipping the camera, not on your own self, but around the world. And you're kind of encouraging Snapchatters around the world to learn about the world around them. I love your point earlier about maybe you look at a plant and it gives you a quiz, what is this plant? But you can also be historical, right? If you live in a city, like what is this place that I'm looking at that I walk past every day, but now with like our land marker technology or with our marker technology where you can overlay information at the place, at the time, um, you can start teaching people like, hey, did you know that this thing has this history or this information that you didn't know before? And I think like educational part of all of this is also really important, especially now when all of us are kind of locked down in our apartments. And maybe a scavenger hunt is a nice little game just to make your children move around the house and explore some things. So, Talking about artists and creators, how can they just start working with Zen Studio really easily? Sometimes, uh, depending on the person's background, they can be intimidated by JavaScript scripting, basically. But nowadays, we have Visual Materials Editor, where you can just create immersive materials that will just animate and create uh, immersive, beautiful effects or even we're introducing the script graph where you can visually connect all the logic of your lens and just like swap event really easily as just like changing connection. And I think this will open Lens Studio to even more and more people. I love that point. It's, it's really trying to enable everyone regardless of their background and actually bring in their expertise into this new level of augmented reality. Yeah, for sure. The really exciting thing about working with Lens Studio is that you can not only export it to your phone, you can also export it to Snap Camera, which allows your lens to exist on a computer, which means that your lens can not only exist on mobile devices, but it can exist on any device with a computer. So potentially, we can use this with any screens with a camera in it. So we can use the same kind of AR interactions on big screens for art shows or on the streets or in an amusement park or anywhere we want. So it really enables all sorts of artists and creators to create experiences that can be placed in so many different interesting places. And I think that's where our conversation really is about, right? It's not about the technology. Sure, it's great. You can detect the mouth, the eyes, the world around you, but it's not about that. It's about the innovation and how we express ourselves and creating games and creating education. Now we're at a point in time where we can focus not on the technology, but like, you know, we're working with this collaboration with LACMA. We've seen creators use lenses to tell a story or advocate for certain things 
like maybe you care about an animal and you can display that animal in the real world um, so other people can see and feel as if they were uh, traditionally at a zoo, but now they can do that at home. So basically, at this point, you can just think about the idea you want to implement and not care about the how to achieve that and not be like stopped by some aspects of this are complicated and just like use it at its most. That's what Lens Studio is really about, right? Like if you're an artist, how can you display the art in the real world? 3D, 2D, uh, whatever. If you're a machine learning, how can you focus on machine learning and then let Lens Studio take care of the 3D, 2D computer graphics? If you're a graphic person, you know, like you said, with Material Editor, you can make amazing graphics. And if you're a scripter, you know, you can use visual scripting to build really interesting interactivity for these AR experiences or just focus on the code. And I think that's what's really exciting. And I think that's what I see in the community and can't wait to see the community do. Um, and we're just thinking about how do we enable that. And also events like this are intended to connect people with different backgrounds, with different inclines together to make something new and better. Yeah, I'm glad it's not just us that's working on the platform. And I think it's part of what makes our job very, very fun is that we get to enable as many people as possible to create what they want to create. And our goal is to make the tool as intuitive as possible. We still have so much more to do. But through doing that, and then we, we really see results of people creating just more and more amazing things coming along with it. So yeah, it's, it's quite a beautiful journey. Can't wait to see you all just join us in this journey. We're all doing this for you to show us what the world is like in the future. See you on the forums. <laughs> ask questions, please ask questions. <laughs> or post answers. <laughs> <laughs>